gets a win over the expansion Hongzhou Spark, but our casting buddies Selmar and Hex disagree on the dynasty against the Gladiators. So friends, I know you're new, but this is old school. We settle this with a 30 second face off. Go. I decided I would rather exchange the hatred I'm gonna get on Twitter from the Seoul Dynasty fans for the love I'll get in the arena for picking the Los Angeles Gladiators here. Make sure you tag me on social media with your Seoul Dynasty tag, War On, because I think they're gonna get warred on by the new Los Angeles Gladiator tank. And yeah, I said it, they're gonna beat him easy. Dude, Fisher is going to just strangle that roar. It's gonna turn <laughs> into a squeak is what's gonna happen. The Gladiators are about to get plucked. They're gonna get that void filled. There's not gonna be anything <laughs> left of them at the end of the day. Hex, that's it, the Gladiators, they're done. I mean, I Player agree punch. with you, but then we'd both be wrong. All right, guys, I love it. Well, it's time to finally start the 2019 Overwatch League season. Guys, make some noise. We're kicking it off in just a moment. Should be excited about this season because there's a lot. I think fans should be excited about this season because there's a lot of new teams, which means there's going to be a lot more competitors and rising stars. It hasn't quite hit me yet. I'm sure once I get on stage, I go, Oh my, I'm, I'm really here. 우리는 적기 때문에 더 이상 내려갈 곳이 없습니다. 위로만 올라갈게요. Ever over. I mean, yeah, obviously I'm excited. Why would you not be? Oh my God! This crowd is on fire. Yo, it is mad. Are you guys ready to kick this off? Are they clearly excited? Are we they clearly excited? excited? 
It's so we can great that to be back here it's in so the arena. Great to be back and here in the arena. Watching is in and for a treat today as we kick this season up. Treat today as we kick this season up with an epic rematch. That's right, the epic rematch of the 2018 Grand Finals, where the London Spitfire, where the fans at, took it down the Philadelphia Fusion. But today, it's Philly's chance for revenge. Oh, they're gonna try their best, I'm sure. But you know what? I think I speak for everyone if I say I can't wait any longer. Are we ready to get this new season on the way? I love it. Starting off first, please get on your feet and put your hands together for the Philadelphia Fusion. Leading the charge, Sportsman will recognize one of Philadelphia's most attractive faces. Valentine's Day is off to a good start. Look at those six familiar faces returning to the stage. Eight returning players overall, and of course, a new addition in Elf, the support player, who we hopefully get to see later this week. Philadelphia coming out. The fans are fired up. Gentlemen, starting six, please take your seats. And there's a look at your starting six. Carpe, EQO, Sato, Poco, Boombox, and Neptuno to open things up. And as they are setting in on the stage, it is time to meet their opponent. A reigning Overwatch League champion. Please make some noise for the London Spitfire. your champions, Gesture, Profit, and the rest of the London Spitfire. And before we let the starting six take to the stage, we of course have a few questions. So Danny Lim, our new insider, is joining us down here on the floor to do some translation work. And Gesture will be joining us for that interview. You guys are the reigning champions, and you're about to go in for that big rematch against the Fusion, which, frankly, you made a... You made quick work off during the grand finals. Now, of course, the big question is, do you think the Philadelphia Fusion can get revenge on this stage today? 오늘의 런던과의 퓨전과의 리매치죠. 어, 저번 시즌 마지막 그랜드 파이널 때 런던이 그나마 좀 제가 봤을 땐좀 쉽게 어, 이긴 것 같았습니다. 오늘의 복수전 과연 필라델피아가 성공할 수 있을 것 같습니까, 제시 선수? 저는 확률은 50대 50이라 생각하고 힘 닿는 만큼 저희가 열심히 하겠습니다. I feel like there is about 50-50% chance that Philadelphia might win or us winning, but we will try our best to win them again. All right, 50-50. All right. <laughs> I guess it's everyone's game to win. Now, you are, however, the reigning champion, and that means every other team in the league will be gunning for you. You are the squad to beat. Do you have a message for every other team in the Overwatch League? 그랜드 파이널 챔피언으로서 제셔 선수 그리고 또 런던 스피파이어를 겨냥하는 많은 팀들이 이제 또이 타이틀을 뺏어가기 위해서 좀 많은 노력을 하고 있는 것 같아요. 제셔 선수 한 말씀 부탁드릴게요. 그 많은 팀들에게. 저희는 우승을 했지만 여전히 똑같이 할 거고 저희는 열심히 하면 다시 우승할 수 있다고 생각합니다. Although we are the champions, I feel like we always have to give our best, and if we just do that, we will be the champions for this season as well. All right. I like it. Yeah, we take that as a promise, right, Pocket? <laughs> Well, gentlemen, we'll have your starting six to take your seats here. London Spitfire fans, are you ready to see your team? Philadelphia Fusion fans, are you ready to meet your team? It's time to kick off the first match of the 2019 season, and there's no one better to bring in the action than two guys I love. Let's send it over. We got Mr. X and Uber for the cast. Thank you very much, Chris. 200 days oh, it's been since we were too last hitting the Overwatch League, but we start where we left off. Our inaugural season champions going up, of course, against Philadelphia Fusion. It's a rematch, Matt. You love to see these kind of games, yeah. especially, essentially back to back. But let's think back now. All those months ago to the Barclays Center, no one really expected London to be such a dominant force coming into our inaugural yeah. season playoffs. 
but their level just shot up drastically over those last couple of weeks. Yeah, you know, London, they were up and down throughout the regular season. There was, uh, you know, a little bit of a, a dip in their performance. You saw Bird Ring come out of the roster. They were playing Hureg, who was on that roster at the time, the DPS slot. They couldn't really figure it out. That's in Philadelphia, you know, they kind of went in the opposite direction where EQO comes into the roster, where they put Shadowburn on the bench, and they started to climb and rise. But it was London at the end, man. You know, they, all you need to be is good for those playoff weeks, and they were spectacular. We played it over two days in the Barclays Center. The first series, Philadelphia Fusion actually looked like they were coming out quite strong. They actually managed to win a map in that series. Yeah. You and I had the call on that game, and it looked like they'd be much more dominant. But things changed when we got to day two. Yeah, I mean, day two was not close. I think London could, you know, smell the blood in the water, so to speak, and you know, they came out firing. And I think Philadelphia, you go into the offseason and are you happy with the way you know your season went overall probably but you know the to make it to the finals and lose like that that's got to sting a little bit so i'm going to see if they come out with a little bit extra fire on the stage today and london with the team that we expected to be dominant from the start they fell off mid-season philly didn't even weren't even here for the first week of <laughs> yeah. the watch league let's not forget that their main tank player obviously didn't even start playing until stage four. Uh, you know, Sado obviously was sitting on the bench for a while, but look at this, Matt. Profit, what a dominant performance in that match. And, you know, he's the MVP of the grand finals and deservingly so. You see how far ahead he was in terms of final blows. Obviously, yeah, in Overwatch, you have eliminations. Final blows are the actual, you know, you putting you your other character into the respawn. Yeah, so you see how good Profit was there, you know, led everybody by, you know, wide margin and I think you know you look at him you know, during the regular season I don't even believe he was like voted in for the all-stars which is ridiculous he's like a reserve but he was spectacular I think you know because London was a, a little bit inconsistent you know his value kind of went down overall but he is a phenomenal sure. player I mean looking on the side of the Philadelphia Fusion this is a team packed with star talent but if you're just getting into the Overwatch League or if you're interested in Philly who's the player you'd be telling people to watch to really get their fix of star power in the Overwatch League? I, I think people are going to know this name it's Carpe uh, even when I talk to people who you know are in other esports they know at least who Carpe is when they think about Overwatch and it's the Widow highlight clips it's all the crazy plays he's able to pull off I know I remember casting this one from last year and it was some of his teammates you're talking to they're like oh you know we're two or three players down and all he's saying is it's winnable because he is that good that he can just come on to the point, land a bunch of headshots, and swing the fight in his team's favor. I mean, that first clip was the one that we sort of have dubbed the uh. winnable, quote, <laughs> fight. There were many moments for Carpe across multiple different heroes across the entirety of our inaugural season. But let's have a look at the starting six today for the Philadelphia Fusion of the London Spitfire first. And it is probably no surprise to see yes. the same roster that we saw prior. Yeah, you know, they trimmed down their roster. You know, they had a pretty big roster in the inaugural season. You know, Fisher was on this team at the beginning. You know, they had a lot of players on the bench and they couldn't really figure out the right mix. Once they settled on this six, they started to really, you know, pick up the play. And I think coming into this season, you really want to put the focus on these six players. They're so good together. Not surprised to see this being the starting six. Conservative in their off-season pickups. We've seen Guard and Krillin yeah. be brought into the fold for London Spitfire. Krillin has the most incredible hair, by the way. But of course, as we jump into this series, we're going to have our map set presented by Toyota. We're starting off on Ilios here. Sunny Shores for our first map of the 2019 season. Yeah, now Ilios, uh, you know, potentially you see, you know, a lot of Widowmaker on Ruins, looking at some of the other maps in this series. You look at Hollywood, Volskaya, Rialto. I think some maps where you can see, you know, a lot of variation outside of triple tank, triple support. I think we're gonna see, you know, a lot of people probably expect to see a lot of triple tank, triple support coming into the should. week. And you I should. think you should. I mean, I, I'm not gonna tell you, you're not gonna see it. You're <laughs> gonna see it quite often, but I think you're gonna see a lot of other crazy things that you probably would not have expected. Teams try that they've been working on in scrims leading up to the league to try and figure out if there's other compositions they can run to take advantage of some of these you know, really you know high skill gap heroes that they can you know, combo a few of them together and really make a powerhouse lineup. I mean, we talked about this in the off season, right? Since the Overwatch League finished, the inaugural season was over, we started seeing a lot more of this tank heavy composition set up. Yeah. That happened and prevailed over the off season, but there have been whispers, changes. The game's still evolving and so are these players. And it's all gonna start here, ladies and gentlemen, on the map of Ilios. Lighthouse is where we begin. Last season champions versus the runners up. And there's a score to settle. So, so this is a point where I think you would see triple tank, triple support. If you see the variation move of off of it, you probably see it loaded with DPS. You know, some verticality here. I think in maps and points where you see verticality in the map, Geography. I think that's where you'll see, you know, like uh, so crazy see ledges crazy. and bridges yes. and overpass. You'll, you'll you'll see the the Faras, the Hanzos. You know, a lot of long range damage that you can stay from afar. 
Doesn't look like you're going to see any of it now. It's going to be three thanks, three supports on three thanks, three supports. Very conservative opening. This is a composition that's been pulled by some people, goats. Uh, so if you do hear that being thrown around, that's what this is. Straight away, though, both teams are going to trade fairly conservatively here and trying to find an early piece. It's going to be a shield bash on towards Gesture, force him up on high. And you do have Gesture playing Winston here instead of Reinhardt. And that's something, you know, we talked about potentially, you know, bringing up in the pregame is that you no, know, Gesture's a very good Winston. You know, his Arisa is very strong as well. You know, he didn't have in season one a great showing on Reinhardt, a little bit up and down. So we'll see how London kind of goes about that. If he's worked in the Reinhardt during the offseason, it'll be Philadelphia in control of the point here first. Philly have controlled the point, but London don't lose the fight. They back away and concede that space. Philadelphia can now start accruing that percentage once they get to 100, it's all over. So the Spitfire need to find an opening. I mean, you haven't seen anybody drop for either team. It's just that Philadelphia does a little bit more damage in that first fight. When Gesture jumps down, he has to jump up. London not able to engage, make a play for the point. See, EQO, second time, he's focusing down Gesture, but that's the first kill. It's Boombox falling to Bedoshin. Always getting those picks in from the back line, and now things might just fall apart. Sato. Going by the wayside here, and Jester pops the bubble up. It's an easy finish on Carpe. One kill in these heavy tank, heavy support compositions. Is it often enough to uh, to solve the fight there and then? And obviously, one kill can turn the tide in a fight. When it's your Zenyatta going down early, that is even bigger. You need the Discord Orb that Zenyatta provides to add that extra damage. As soon as Boombox goes down, you have no ability to use like a Transcendence, or you don't have that Discord Orb to provide that extra damage. As they're coming to the point, that's a huge advantage for London there. We'll discuss a little bit the team composition differences in just a moment, but that first pick was crucial. Gesture again, looking to open up another opportunity. It was Neptuna that took a lot of damage in the Graviton Surge, now is out. Bird can lace it on thick, but there's a Transcendence for Fusion to keep them healed up despite the Zyra all being committed to the fight. Jester jumps forward. Primal Rage stunned up for a moment. Look at his health. The city oh. He's over the edge. I guess if we forgot to bring his floaties today and Poco sends him off. That allows the fusion to take the point now at the sound barrier from Neptuno in play. I guess start to pressure a little further. He's the grab. Self-destructing over the top. Sato gets the pin on Profit to remove him. But Poco, bit of fisty cuff for Fury. He's down. I think that'll be a combo you see a lot during the season. The Graviton Surge with that Diva self-destruct as Philadelphia with control of the point. Both teams use all their ultimates. Now you see Gesture go over and play Reinhardt. So Why now is we this? have a mirror. Why is this preferable uh, to the uh, wins we started with? Uh, look, you ideally want the Reinhardt to go with Azari. I mean, those two heroes go hand in hand and they have since the beginning of Overwatch. And it makes it a lot easier. You know, Gesture can walk up, take a ton of damage. He can also put down a ton of damage, swinging the hammer, get the bubble, then a defense matrix, right? Keep him alive for a very long time and allow him to build up that Earth Shatter rather quickly. And you see, they just walk Gesture right into Sato and they're able to take him out. A lot of burst healing there for the Spitfire, though. They've taken considerable poke damage, or I guess considerable early damage in that fight. But losing Sato early is not what you want. You need your Reinhardt. So much damage mitigated, of course, by the shield. And now London. They're setting up pretty well. Graviton Surge is available for Birdring. Gesture has the Earth Shatter. But while you combo a lot of these abilities and you're able to keep Gesture alive for that long, that's how he's able to build an Earth Shatter in his first fight, right? Like I mentioned, D.Va comes in with Defense Matrix, then the bubble comes through. Profit with the Burst Heals. Here's gonna come a Rally, and there's an Earth Shatter from Gesture, and uh, Philly in a world of trouble here, Mitch. And they walked into that match. They knew what they'd be going up against. I guess the disappointment for Philly is that they committed not only the Brigitte Ultimate to the fight from EQO, but they may not have time to get back before the round's done. Time just not on their side, and the Spitfire will take this first round. They know Philly was able to get the point early and build up some percentage. But when you take a look at some of the numbers, it's so heavily in favor of London. And I think it's really just because you know, Gesture on the right, uh, no, the Winston, we caught a little bit of it. He takes a lot of damage at the beginning and then he has to jump back up to the high ground. And they're never really able to make a really strong first attempt to get the point. So uh, here we'll take a look. It's going to be Gesture's Earth Shatter. As you see the rally coming in from Profit, the rally from Sonny went for oh, Fire Strike. Perfect. That's why they got caught. That shield would have been up, Sato. That's very risky to, to use a Fire Strike there when you probably have a feeling that maybe the enemy Reinhardt is close to having Earth Shatter, but maybe yeah, that, well, Gesture was so fast he wasn't expecting it. I don't think he expected him to have it because that was really only one fight that you saw Gesture play Reinhardt and he had the Shatter, and I don't think they expected the position he was going to be playing. Uh, both main tanks will play Winston here on this point. A lot of verticality, a lot of opportunity for Winston to dive in, get a ton of value. Trying to find early picks on those more vulnerable targets, i.e. the Zenyatta Lucio here. Birdring taking a back seat and getting half charged here. For the bubble that he's given over towards Jester, and these teams will trade for the time being. Birdring's health was low. Health, a pack given by Prophet to repair him up. 
Now the fight transitions to the point. Carpe forced to use a barrier on himself, but there it is. Padoshi gets picked off on the backside. They can't even punish Sato for this one as he gets away with the jump. That's what you're looking for here in these comps. Uh, you see Philly a lot like the first point. Yeah, they're able to take, a, take control first. As you see Sato there, he gets a bubble from Carpe when he jumps in, and then when the bubble wears off, that's when he uses his own Winston bubble. By the time that wears down, you think you have the cooldown to jump right back out so you can get back to safety. But the one thing I want to mention, you're only uh, with Zarya, you're only really getting a ton of value if you're able to build a ton of charge, right? You see Jester now going to Reinhardt, great target to build charge. The Bird Ring's got double the energy, average energy of Carpe throughout the game thus far. That's a huge difference. Definitely leading in, in that particular metric. Poco and the rest of the fusion just take a step back. Their defense matrix committed and Philly playing a little bit safe for the time being. 35% progress towards ending this round. The London Spitfire, they're hankering for a fight. Looking for some argy bargy and Birdring's got the Graviton Surge ready to go. He's just trying to make sure that this does not get even. He gets an EQO in Sato. Sato uses Primal Rage to stay alive. That's going to be a big round of grabs out from oh. Carpe. It's going to be a sick sound barrier, though. You see Nuss dancing up top on the Lucio. Connects with everybody. Just in the nick of time to keep the Spitfire alive, and the fight continues. Sato drops down. He's stunned up. Does self-destruct over the top. It doesn't hit anyone. Fusion able to break ranks and get away. The bird ring is fell. Poco charges in. Sato now quick to chase. Or look at the heels of the Spitfire. London don't want any more of this fight. And Philly... Just want to make sure they know that they won. And with the Winston in play for the Philadelphia Fusion, it makes it hard for Bird Ring because you know, when you have Reinhardt, you can expect the team to kind of huddle around Reinhardt. You need to play around him. It's very difficult to land like a big Graviton Surge, right? That you can take advantage of the huge self destruct gesture with an Earth Shatter as well. Now, who do you go to Earth Shatter? You know, Philadelphia can play a little bit more spread out. You're not going to see like a, so a many huge, ways to get Earth Shatter. I mean, look at look at from Gesture's POV. I mean, he really doesn't have any options here. Oh, he tries to bait uh, them by turning his back, but it doesn't work. Goes for the 180 banger, right? And he's still going to get taken down. He quite pushes in now, rally out from both Brigaders. And up to the high ground is Fury. He doesn't want any of it. Rising Tide, and he's out of there. Uh, if your best option is to try and bait with like a 360 Shatter, it's probably not, <laughs> not, not looking good. Is that You see Billy just trying to close this out. Over time burning down, that's a grab that comes out. Sato gets stuck in it. He's going to use Primal Rage to stay alive. Jumps back up top. Very ineffective yeah, there. It's just it's the main tank cord, and he just heals through it. Or gets healing. EQ always down. You see Jester's on his own on the point. It's not where you want to be as Reinhardt. Birdring trying to keep himself shielded up now, but Sato was a little bit disgruntled about the solo grab earlier on. He himself with a score to settle. I see this fight proceeds with Prophet trying to move up. <laughs> Essentially, the fight had already been lost about 30 seconds prior. It's just a matter of cleaning up. So that time you see the Winston play uh, pay off. You know, London tried it on the, you know, the first point. On Lighthouse, it didn't really work out for them. They go over to the Reinhardt. That time, Sato was able to stay on the Winston the entire time. Did a nice job. You know, whenever they would like solo grab him, he would always make sure he has primal up. You don't have to blow a support ult to keep him alive, right? You know, the primal rage, you get a, a ton of HP up to you know, a thousand, and you're able to just stay alive with these. Very dominant round there from Philadelphia. Never lost control at that point. It doesn't really matter now. One more round to decide the map of Ilios here. We head to Lighthouse. A little bit of a different map. We do see a lot of teams go for the Orissa play here, Matt. It seems to be the safest, but Philly. They're going for the Winston. Yeah, London's going to have the Arisa. No Roadhog here. You know, the halt hook combos. You're going to see Fury stay on Diva. As Sato dives in. He gains a little bit of information. He sees what they're running. Has to be careful. <laughs> as, uh, flashbang. And you're not able to jump out because the halt comes through. The, the flashbang as well. A lot of CC able to stun him there and burn him down. Philadelphia identified that the weakest part of this line of Spitfire setup is probably Bird Ring on McCree. He lacks mobility, doesn't have a, have a lot of tools to fuel for himself or to peel enemies off. But if he has the protection from his teammates, you see situations like that where he gets to use the flashbang, takes Sato out of the fight. And now this becomes really annoying for Philly to remove Lana from the point. I mean, I mean, Philly just has to fully commit their entire team to dive here. Is that a work? Yeah, they're, they're going to be able to take out Profit as you lose Honda. It's Carpe coming on a little bit of a flank. Able to pick up three is, uh, you know, you saw some players from Philly jump through the front, Carpe moves through that side door and then rotates around to the back. And able to pick up three final blows there to swing it back in Philly's favor. I actually thought Philly was going to have a tougher time taking that back. We, we did notice, obviously, the positioning there from the Hanzo from the Spitfire was pretty far away from the rest of his team. There was definitely a, a good window for Sato to jump in. And now the Spitfire say, look, we can't play this risky a composition anymore. That one had too many holes, too many weak spots. Let's go again.
<laughs> for this triple support, triple tank setup and see how this works. Gesture the first to the frame. Yeah, but because Philadelphia wins that fight rather quickly and now London is switched, they have a pretty big advantage in terms of ultimates as London's going to use the sound barrier here to keep themselves up. Boombox will use the transcendence for Philadelphia. You get the main tank and the Brigitte down, that's all the burst healing you know, that Brigitte can provide. You don't really have to use any more ult, so this is actually looking really good for the fusion. Sato is looking very decisive, Matt, already here in this season. Definitely leading the charge for the fusion and making a lot of these decisions to get these early picks. You saw him in that last fight, the transcendence really allowed him to play far more aggressively, chasing down those weaker targets. Well, it's funny, we always talk about like Sato as the main tank for this Philadelphia fusion roster, like he was like a mainstay. He really only played stage four in the playoffs. Like, 10 really games have, and then the playoffs. He, he didn't really have a ton of run with this roster, obviously suspended early on and then able to play for stage four. Now, maybe with some more practice time, he could be even better for this roster this year. Carpe doesn't want to use Graviton Surge here. Lest Fury eat it up at long range, the enemy team gets a lot of notice that the projectile is flying. But this might be an opportunity now. Self-destruct goes in, it doesn't work out. Gesture is down and the rest of the Spitfire are forced to just back away. And they will. Might be a little bit of a catch here on the Zaya. Scarpe may want to try and make this worse for them and get some use out of this charge. He's doing max damage currently. I mean, you will have the rally here for London, and you're also going to get close to a Graviton Surge. But you may need to use that Transcendence. Let's say if Birdring takes some damage early, to keep him up through that. Which will allow Philadelphia to build up those support ults. So that change early on allowed Philadelphia to have these ultimates to put away the game. See, Poco is trying to hide from Birdring, just in case Birdring tries to Graviton, and he can get a nice little eat on that one. It doesn't quite work out, so the Transcendence is forced to be committed for the Philadelphia Fusion. Now we're in overtime. Self-destruct will it be a Poco bomb. He'll get one. Profit is down, Poker removed as he wasn't benefiting from the protection of his suit. And a sound barrier now keeping the Spitfire very durable as this fight continues over the point. Gesture's forced to use Primal Rage here as he was stunned up and now he returns to the fray. And he's mad! He's looking for Neptuno, just skating on the edge, but of course Lucio able to get out of those situations. Philly had to move off the point here. They may have to end the fight. So Carpe getting very close to yet another grab. You see Bergen because he dies only at 46%. Big Philly taking the point back. Carpe moving forward about 90 to another grab. He's got to make sure Fury doesn't get this one, though. Two grabs and two fights. Straight at a diva. This guy is ice cold. That could have been eaten at any point. But it's not to be for the Spitfire. Fury eventually taken down. Boombox finds him down range. And it is just Gesture sitting on the point now. He'll be dead in just a couple of moments. And really, there's nothing Bergeron can do here. And that'll be map one. And Philly, they start the 2019 season on the right foot. Yeah, and that Graviton Surge from Carpe at the end, perfectly placed. He puts it right along the wall, so Fury can't eat that one. He ate the one previously, wanted to make sure he didn't get that one. So it'll be the Philadelphia Fusion taking map number one here against the London Spitfire. We'll be right, right back after this quick commercial break with map number two. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. The pain on the faces of the Philly boys after missing out on that grand final opportunity last year was palpable, very visible. 
but it's a clean slate. It's a new chapter. And they've already put the period on the first sentence. Map one to Philly Fusion. And quite a dominant ending to Ilios, Matt. Yeah, you know, speaking with the Philadelphia Fusion players, I uh, you know before the season, obviously we get together with a lot of the teams. We're able to talk to some of the players. The next map coming up will be Hollywood in this series. They just seemed a lot more confident than they were last year, especially EQO. It's a little bit quiet last year when he came into the roster, when we would see him, you know, a lot of the time Very they walked through. Very introspective. Yeah, they walked through the cast room last year. They were just kind of like, 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 the vanilla's kind of like, like, he's really like, kind of like, the spokesman, like, the leader of this team, which, he's really like, they probably needed, like, leader of this team, which, they probably needed. No, it was great. I hung out with him in Philadelphia when I went for Philly's homecoming, and EQO walks up to me, he's like, Mitch, I'm gonna give you some feedback on your casting. Uh -oh. <laughs> and he gives me 30 minutes of <laughs> straight call. So, you know, the guy has a mind for the game. He thinks about it a heck of a lot. Great to talk to. And I think his cerebral approach to the game actually sort of manifests in a lot of these opportunities. Uh, you know, especially when we see him on Brigitte, believe it or not. Uh, it is a hero in which he can sort of flex some of that brain power and try and be the initiator and set things up. The London Spitfire will defend as Philly want to continue this trend of map wins. They're gonna be out of the doors here again. It will be three tanks, three supports. Whole lot to love. And I think it'll be important, uh, you know, how Philadelphia plays on offense here is gonna dictate what London decides to do. So Philly comes through in a little slow. London doesn't want to give up a ton of space here, Mitch. Actually, they let them just run right on to the point. You don't want to get pushed back into that cafe, right? You get a ton of just AOE damage down. The Carpe, the landing that alternate fire, Zarya just looking down those big balls of energy. Again, opportunities for both Zayas to gain some charge here. The trading is a bit back and forth. It's used, the damage is usually healed away, so it doesn't mean a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. But now London transitioned over to the high ground here. Philadelphia need to be ready to receive them. A little bit of a finagle here from the Spitfire to try and gain a better position. But Carpe has high ground. He can continue to charge his barrier up on Sado. He's taking a little bit more damage than the otherwise would like. And yeah, Poco was caught out of position, Matt. He'll be ejected from his mech, and this is not a good start for Philly. Yeah, and the tough part when Poco gets in that position as we saw from Carpe's POV, he has to use that Zarya bubble to keep him alive, which means they don't have it for Sato on the point. He's also so, taking damage. Right, so as soon as London sees that they burn bubble onto Poco, Gesture just runs right at Sato, and there's nothing there. There's no defense matrix, right? Because he's off to the side. They know there's no bubble. And at that point, Sato has like two options. Just stand there with your shield up and just wait to die. Or you put the shield down and swing, you get hit with a Discord orb and you're dead anyway. So. It's a, it's a really tough spot for Sato to be in right there. You gotta see some better positioning from Philly. And this is not how Philadelphia wanted to start the round. Look at the ultimates available for the Spitfire. Graviton Surge, aforementioned, just gets let rip straight away. The support ultimates also available for London. If they can win fights like this by only committing one, maybe two ultimates, they can essentially do this until the cows come home or all the map ends, whichever one is quicker. <laughs> you know when you watch, uh, you know, the three tank, three support, Comes. It's, a, it's a lot easier, you know, uh, to gauge the ultimates when you watch, you know, when you're playing dive, right? You know, Genji Blade comes through, you wipe up three. It's really like the small just abilities that the heroes have that make the big difference. Like the ultimates are great, but they also get canceled out by all the healing with this. Comp. And the ultimates on the other team as well, which offer right. the same. Right, but it's really like you're looking at like, you know, the, the Brigittas, right? Do they have the bash up? Do they have that insta burst heal up? What about this one, Matt? What about a self destruct? Carpe pretty much soaks it up there himself. Nuts goes down. Transcendence now be committed by both teams to this fight. Fire strike from Sardos. He tries to lead the team forward, and EQ is there with him. They want to push up. A third of the healing essentially is missing for London now, and that was a sound barrier that Nuss had available. Not having him present in that fight was nasty, and now it's ringing around the Rosie. Sato's got a pocket full of Earth Shadow, though, and he's looking to bring it down. Philly just needs to get position on the point without losing players, and Nuss, I guess he makes quite a strong entrance getting rid of Carpe. Yeah, and Sato actually uses that Earth Shatter inside, and they're trying to get rid of an ocean, which they do. That'll be the grab that comes down from Bird Ring, and you see just there's too many players alive here for Philadelphia. London not going to be able to hold here on point A, at least for now. They may be able to come back on another the defensive stand, but it looks like they're just gonna give this one up. It's not the first time. In fact, already in this series that we've seen Sato specifically targeted, uh, you know, for a Graviton Surge, hold the angry Reinhardt in place so we can deal with him. That time, the Fusion had a Transcendence that were more than happy to commit to making sure the fight that started well, ended well for them. Three minutes and 10 seconds on the clock, Philly. Finally get off to a start. Oh, well, you know, when we said that uh, Poco was out of position there, it was actually Gesture, the one who was out of position there for London. His teammates go to the high ground and Philly chases, and then he tries to be kind of sneaky coming behind the back stairs and he gets caught out. That'll be a self-destruct that goes up in the air from Poco, connects with nothing. Yeah, Prophet able to avoid that one there, whether it was by shield or by blocking line of sight. And a whip shot to find EQO will quickly end this fight. The Fusion have lost too many of their most valuable players here. Now, healers are the first three to go down, which is never a great sign.
And I'll reset now. Have a look at these numbers over the Spitfire, Matt. A lot of impactful ultimates just around the corner. You know, you know, you still have you know, some of this armor on Fedotion right now. So Zenyatta becomes very difficult. You know, the shield's above the armor, right? The shield's regen. So he actually wears that down now, so you won't have any of that. That will change. Yeah. That will change, of course. Armor will go on top eventually. Sato now. Earth Shatter available for him. Graviton Surge using but Birdry. Doesn't get much done. Okay, very happy to have that one for breakfast. And that's got to be the starter's pistol now for the Philadelphia Fusion to be going forward. That self-destruct on my compose for just a second. But look at that. The blocked Earth Shatter. Sato wasn't even trying to block it. Jesu was just trying to use more ultimates into this fight. Huge spin for the London Spitfire now. And a Graviton Surge comes out for Philly. Jesu's caught in. Nice high sensitivity. Perhaps not going to do the job of the Transcendence in play. And Birdring will be pushed away. Damn, that's a lot of ultimates committed by London into that fight, man. Yeah, it's going to be Philly that'll come back with their rally. Another self-destruct in sound barrier to use. For London, you will you will have the Earth Shatter. You'll have your rally. And Again, know, by Most the way. likely, you'll get your sound barrier to use as well. So we'll see how they decide to combo these. Maybe Gesture can land you know, a big Shatter. Obviously, you can't stun through the Reinhardt anymore. Connect, you know, with that combo. You have to, like, go around the shield to be able to land this. Oh, no. From the high ground, Carpe again, trying to get a little bit of charge before the fight begins, but Jesse's already in there, Earth Shatter, he's looking for Boombox! Boombox gets a repair pack, and then he gets a sound barrier! So much emphasis being put on protecting Boombox by filling in a pays off this time, Jesse's down, Bernard, he's losing, Carpe! When did you get your driver's license, mate? Are you even young enough? Notion push back, and that will be Philly getting across the line, nice little back cap! To get themselves into the last stretch. You know, you know, in the position that London's in, and you know, with Reinhardt, like uh, how it is, where you can't just run up with the Brigitte and stun and then chatter anymore, just land like a crazy six man chatter. You have to yeah. just kind of like play for maybe one or two players, and they actually connect with Boombox there, and they have to like you know, all rush over to try and save him. It's not a bad chatter. I mean, you get the, the Zen, right? That's one of the main targets you're trying to get sure. here, but, but you have those support ultimates that come through. You keep them alive. You're already committed. You're in this alleyway. It's a tough spot. To Boombox was some, somewhat far away from Jester when he used that Earth Shatter. And the whole of London had to commit themselves into a small corridor to, to actually yeah. get onto him. So they put themselves in a nasty situation to begin with. You're at the mercy of where you're right. You know, right? <laughs> it's, it's, you know what you want to see? Birdering Discord or just get shredded. And now it's going to be the continued push. Transcendence now being committed to the fight. Carpe happy about this. He knows he can use his Graviton after this ultimate is now no good, but they've lost Sato. Do they commit that in this fight? Do they, do they back away? Looks like the latter is more likely now as they're barely having that Reinhardt, but Jesse's shield is being pressured down. He's being forced back. Now he wants to charge up. Yeah, in London, they know they have to win this fight you know, pretty handily, so they end up using the rally. Neptuno just trying to be sneaky. Challenge Bit Ocean one on one in the back line. Not going to get anything done there. So you use the rally because you need to win that fight, right? You know, if Philadelphia wins that fight, they move the payload all the way to the end. They probably still have some time left. So, yeah. now you, but now you allow Philadelphia to come back with some nice ultimates, right? Rally is such a powerful ultimate in terms of support ults to keep everybody topped up. More importantly, this Earth Shatter could be uh, huge from Sato. Doesn't quite get the result he's looking for. And now the grab and bomb combo. Oh, the ball oh. gets. The X Fury finds two. And, and that's possible because Jester comes through with the pin of Sato, so you don't have that Reinhardt shield to protect everybody when that self-destruct comes down. Everybody blows up during that, so. One more chance, really, for Philadelphia yeah. here, Matt. The, I guess the, the silver lining is that they do have a Graviton Surge to commit when Bidoshin doesn't have a Transcendence. There may be a sound barrier from Nas, but this was the window. They're pretty late. Carpe's had this ult for a long time, and the Earth Shadow's gonna make it impossible for a real fight. They've gotta go for it, though. Sato's gone down to Philadelphia now, throwing everything at them, but it's not gonna be enough. Graviton Surge doesn't combo well with their self-destruct in that case. The sound barrier was hefty on the Spitfire, and Neptuno, believe he was trying to back cap here. It's just the dregs of Philly now to come forward and try and get something going, Matt. That but Ocean will use the transcendence to touch. It'll be Sato coming back on Wrecking Ball with a slam. Okay, so EQO is going to connect with Gesture. Maybe Philly's able to make something out of this, but Birdring getting dangerously close to this grab could put it away. Birdring now again. Graviton Surge, as you said, Matt, would be the end. He does get it off. It wasn't the, the Poco was too busy just trying to stay in the game. It's not going to get the job down on Neptuno. Often is one of the last players to sit around. He will be able to keep a contested push it forward a little bit more, but that is all that Philly are going to get. And they'll have to be happy with that one. At least they managed to get a good distance here on that first push. We're going to go to a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. Just around the corner, the second half of Hollywood.
If you're a Philly Fusion fan, you're probably not too disappointed with the progress they made on that last round, pushing two checkpoints and pretty much getting to the last cul-de-sac there is on the map, as you can see there. That is where London now need to get to to win this second map and make it one and one in the series, Matt. Again, yeah. a lot of play between, you know, three tank, three support on this map. Not a whole lot of variation in that regard until the end, yep. where Philly were just trying to get something happening. In London, uh, you know, when they take out Sato at the end there, that's really where Philadelphia's attacks are to fall apart. Carpe uses the grab, they get a good self-destruct in there, but because Gesture is alive and on Reinhardt and able to block it, there's no damage that came down. I know when you're actually watching the play, you can actually see EQO tries to land a bash on through, but now, London makes sure they bubble as well as they're trying to connect with the backside of Gesture. It uh, looked like, you know, London is you know, flirting with a little bit of a different comp, but they're going to come out. You know, standard three tanks, three support. A couple more maps in this series, probably an opportunity to see a little bit more variation from them. But this is where we're at right now. And I think also part of the reason you do see some, a little bit more of, you know, Winston instead of Reinhardt is in case they come out with something that's a, a little bit crazier than this if they came out with a few more DPS or you know, three, four DPS, let's say. That's where you would need that Winston to kind of jump on some of those targets that are split up. There might be something here, man. Sada was just respawned. It was a one-for-one one trade, but that doesn't really benefit Philly as they have a slightly longer distance to, to sort of walk. So Sada was just about to return now. Jester drops off the high ground here. He's issuing a challenge, telling well, Philly to come and fight. Well, they want to try and find a target. Now you see when Sato comes down, that's when the rest of London pushes on through. You just can't find a target when everybody's so split up. The advantage here for London, and to try and get a target out of Philadelphia, is to oh, stand pick. on the point, so they have to come towards it. But just like we talked about in map one, you know, when Boombox got taken out by Bidoshin, oh, this time, Boombox is the one laying down the damage. And Bidoshin did not have aggressive positioning there, man. He was actually sitting well and truly at the back of London's formation. Boombox just picks him off with a Zenyatta snipe. Love to see it. So you see they'll leave Fury out of mech here, so uh, he'll have to use that Bunny Blaster, build up a new mech, and then get right back at it. That's right. Better than the start of Minecraft, we have to punch trees for five minutes to get the first block of wood. You can yeah. shoot and actually have some interaction. All right, Carpe, look at the bubble, look at the energy. Oh, it's such pizzazz for him up on this high ground. The Transcenders being used in the fight by Boombox here. Philly just want a little bit more uh, of a robust setup, but they don't find any picks in this fight. Both teams trade off those support ults. The Spitfire, though, will have Nasa sound barrier available. Neptuno needs to work on getting his ready for this fight, too. Yeah, London's trying to draw a target out here, and that's kind of what Philly wants because they have that grab to use. So you see it's going to be a long-range grab that comes out from Carpe. Connects with a view, but oh, no. it comes out. Nothing, though, with that self-destruct. Yeah, just a great block on that self-destruct. EQO gets pinged up against the wall, and Nuss gets the final blow. A shadow here for Jester is an opportunity. Right now you can see he's just trying to make sure his team is adequately protected, but he's knocked out of the way. Great boot from Neptuno, getting rid of the Reinhardt shield, protecting the Spitfire, playing inside the alley. Now Jester needs to find a target, stick to it, and remove it. And I'm sure he wants to use that shatter, but where is the target? There's nobody there. He's got Neptuno dancing above him. Then you got the Diva coming from one side, the Winston from the other. So now he's going to use it through the card. He connects with the EQO, oh. trying to land on a long distance charge and knock him out of that train. Yeah, he's but trying he to remove Boombox at least away from his uh, his teammates. Yeah. He can get the Zen out with the whole Transcendence, which would be even better. It doesn't work out. Yet Sato still caught just as he was trying to back away. That's going to be the first tick now for London. And it looks like Philly don't really want to have any of it. They're going to give up the point after just that. They don't want to feed ultimate percentage over to the Spitfire. The more damage they take, the closer London get to their next round of ultimates, that's not something Philly can afford. Yeah, and you also want the Reinhardt to you know, come out from Sato, as uh, now you don't really need that Winston, because you know they're not really going to play anything that's like kind of crazy with like a, you know, a Hammond main tank and kind of running around all over the place. So. Okay, there is verticality to use here as a defender, you, you need to shield your team, especially with London taking this very direct a lot approach. Of damage. Not a lot of subtlety here, man. Yeah. <laughs> There is a full charge on Bird Ring, and you know he wants to get that grab away, but something would need to be done about Poco before that happens. Oh, just let it go anyway! There was a lot of risk associated with the use of that, but it pays off to a degree. Bird Ring pushes forward, he finds two, and now the Sound Barrier for London is going to set them on smooth sailing here through the Wild West stage. It, it, it's a little bit of a dance, right, between like Bird Ring and Poco, and if you're Poco, you probably don't expect these long-range grabs to come down. Well, you only, they're the ones that get eaten all the time. You're right? only aware so. of the grab and like the, the, the millisecond before it actually lands and hits the ground and, and, and sort of detonates because it was fired out of line of sight by Bird Ring. Clever. And I mean, if you're Billy, you probably expect that grab to come sooner when Bird Ring is just running straight at your Reinhardt putting down that damage. It's, it'll be a grab that comes out from Carpe. It'll be a self-destruct from both teams. It's, 
Uh, Sato actually connects with a pin on Yuri while he's out of mech, so you're able to take him out. Big no defense matrix. That's just another no utility that's not there to keep Jester alive. He falls right after. Credit to Sato. He probably found one of the only targets that he could actually yeah. have killed in that particular fight. Obviously, uh, a Reinhardt pin is, is doing burst damage, so Transcendence doesn't affect it too much, but finding that pick was good, and this sort of allows Philly now just to dig their heels in a little bit more. Also, they still have the Rally. They still have an Earth Shatter here from Sato. Boombox's Transcendence, even more important. It's definitely going to win the fight 100% for them if they use it remotely oh. properly, and Sato... Don't even need it. He's just taking heads off now. He did not expect to get Nuss there. As he just comes around the corner, Swinging twice, comes up with a Lucio. He's like, all right, that's, that's phenomenal. So he just kind of pushes Listen, on through after that. As a Reinhardt player, as a main yeah, yeah. count your blessings when they happen. <laughs> you don't question them. And you try and remember how, them. How many when blessings happen to you during the community uh, show? Oh, oh, man. Okay, oh, man. So many. Uh, that, was, uh, that was fun. Was it? Yeah. You guys got crushed. Depends who you ask. You had an extra top 500 player. Come on, man. I have not I have not played in a showdown match, a show match that hasn't been skewed against me horrifically. Sato backing up though, he does have an earth shatter here, so an opportunity to use it, but he shields a little bit low, so he probably wants to try and get aggressive and ask for the bubble from Carpe. And they've done a good well at sort of fainting forward, but they go a little bit too far here. EQO gets eaten up, gesture taken down in response, but Philly don't really have too much to work with currently. Carpe being charged up is good, but he will eventually get turned on like a swarm of hornets. The Spitfire will dispatch him. Yeah, but once the shield is burned, and you know that the shield is burned, you know the only things you have to worry about at that point are Defense Matrix that comes out from Poco playing D.Va, and the bubble from Carpe, a burst shield from EQO. Now, it, it, at that point, if you're London, and you push on through, and they burn a support ult, and you just kind of like Lucio speed boost back a little bit, you have a huge advantage there. At, the, at that point, Philly, you almost have to let Sato die and then come back and try again. Carpe, oh, there it is. He lets it go, a bit of a bird ring look, and this might be the time as well. With a self-destruct coming in over the top, it doesn't quite get the job done. Both teams using Transcend. It's a great block on the Earth Shadow, though, by Sato. Prevents Gesture from actually making the play that he was looking for. Again, shields are low for Sato and Co. He goes for the Earth Shadow himself. He does get Hidoshi in the back if I'm not mistaken but he didn't have the shield up to protect his team from the self-destruct and as EQO and Sato both going down now London look like they might be stopped but a couple of minor things have allowed them to progress and it's going to go all the way to the wire here on Hollywood oh that is a tough fight for Philly to lose and I actually like the use of the earth shatter there from Sato because his Reinhardt shield is getting low when the self-destruct goes up in the sky you he's can't got, use it anyway well, right? well he's got two options he either holds the shield there and then he gets burned down by everybody else everybody gets blown up so to mitigate some of the damage, he tries to shatter, prevent anybody from laying damage down, then block it. But looks like Philly wants to fight this early. Why maybe, they play so aggressively? Maybe force some ultimates out. I mean, they have nothing really to use here. Maybe try and get that grab out or something along those lines and then come back with, like, two more fights, really, at this time. Because you have a minute left. So if you force an ult out there, that's great. I mean, if you don't, maybe you build up some of your own. You get a little bit closer to another shatter and whatnot. So... Just trying to build some ultimate, really playing for like a last like final fight and then maybe some stall here. They do have a sound barrier, but they need to stop the Spitfire here. They can't just have a, a good fight, you know what I mean? Shake hands and, and walk off after that. They need to actually clean the Spitfire off the payload now. They do have sound barrier, but Ocean's close to yet another Transcendence, which is just something we're probably not too surprised to see by now. EQO somehow gets out alive, and now it's going to be the sound barrier in Philadelphia. Need to make ends meet now. Bertrand comes in. It's going to be the Graviton Surge used, and that shielding from the Lucio is dripping away. Huge shadow from Shadow, though, keeping things alive in the back. He tries oh, to turn around, but the, he was knocked into the air. He couldn't shield his team from that self-destruct because it just went straight out of the shield. Boombox is forced back now. Fury wants to try and pressure forward. The bird ring is down. It's going to be a close one here. Stun on Fury. He backs away. Sambury now used to keep the Spitfire nice and healthy, but they don't have the staying power. They have to back away for three seconds, then they have to get onto the payload and finish this fight, but they don't have the numbers. Fury desuited. Prophet can't really get there now. His mech's all gone. Signature Tracer, Doomfist even from Bird Ring. London trying everything they have to get this one back, but they're going to struggle. Just sit down. Looks like it's just the Brigitte hanging around here from Prophet. Knocked up his Bird Ring, can't do much there. Prophet trying to hang around, stay alive. Nuss has been removed, and now the self is trying to end it. In the words of the great Monday poet, Ariana Grande, thank you. Next. You know, when Philly comes out there towards the end, and they end up on top in that final fight. When London makes the switches, they try and go over to Doomfist and Tracer. It's like a lot of these heroes that can stall. You know, you have some good burst damage, but so much healing on the other side, there's nothing they can do about it. We'll be right back with the second half of the series right after this break. You're
Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered. And by State Farm. Whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right. Ladies and gentlemen, Philly came into this one looking to get even with the London Spitfire. And after those first two maps, it's looking like they're well on their way. I don't know who those guys on the pregame show were that picked <laughs> London to really Yeah, how this, weird, how very weird. We cool. knew we knew it's going to be fusion all along. Of course. I, I, I did the same thing. That's the best part of not having to provide predictions. But let's take a look back and see how this thing all played out. It goes back to map number one. And here in 2019, we're playing Control out of the gates. I love this because it's always a skirmish. We saw the triple-triple going into action. What were some of the big plays here? Yeah, this was definitely one, a huge shatter from Jesher Sato, trying to get in a sneaky fire strike, but that cost him. I think there's a lot of times where you're going to be seeing this Zarya POV as we go forward if the triple-triple composition remains as popular as it is. She is the what makes it go. Carpe really came into his own on this hero during this set. And look up the cleanup here in the grab. Beautiful headshots coming in from Bodojin, or sorry, Boombox taking out Bodojin in that. But we saw the Zenyatas going back and forth. We've seen kind of the evolution of the triple triple. I think Zenyatta is going to be a mainstay hex. He's one of the best damage dealers in that triple triple. The other one, of course, being the Russian weightlifter in Zarya as well. A lot of it really depends on how she can manage bubbles and get damage going and get alts going. Speaking of that Zarya battle, let's take a look at some of the numbers here from our first matchup. We saw Carpe going in on the Zarya and Bird Ring was playing her on the other side for the London Spitfire. Who would you say looked better in game and what did you see from the numbers here, Hex? Well, it was really a tale of different stages as we went forward on Ilios. Early on, Bird Ring was very, very good at it. But as you see, Carpe, as we went forward, had higher average energy. And these things kind of snowball together in the composition. Higher average energy means that you're going to do more damage. Doing more damage means you're going to have more alts up better. So Carpe, as the series went on, really started to excel on that Zarya. I love what we're seeing already, guys. If you're just tuning in here in 2019, it's all about your tanks. Your Zarya is your damage dealing one. Let's take a look at game number two for our second map. We went over to Hollywood. This one, one of my favorites. We're going to push the payload nice and slow until the alts are ready. Uh, Hollywood was really interesting where these fights took place and you're also going to see a high ground Zarya's as well Hollywood used to be a very soldier 76 map. Zarya is taking over that role because who do you have to shoot at her really? It's been pretty impressive. So who is kind of shining for you? Here's one of the big slams towards the end of this. I mean, honestly, what really stood out for me during this whole uh, team fight brawl, which was the entirety of the map, have been the Zarya's. The Zarya grabs have been on point for both of those teams. And then it really just came down on to how the Divas are placing their bombs. We just saw a beautiful one from Poco, who really was a game sealer for them. And the changes to Diva recently in the newest patch mean that those windows for a Graviton Surge are going to be open a little bit longer. It's going to be tougher than ever for those divas. It's going to be fun to watch how these two teams duke it out the rest of the way. Philly is on match point, but guys, that's it for halftime. But we want to make sure that everyone at home 
is sure to tune in to the Twitch All Access Pass. If you didn't know, for 2019, there's a ton of great new stuff, including access to the Command Center that lets you watch any player POV during that match. And it's only 15 bucks, so go get it right now. Guys, the second half is coming up. Blizzarina, make some noise. You guys still having fun? I love you. We'll see you in just a moment. Join T-Mobile and score $20 to the Overwatch League shop on February 19th. Download the T-Mobile Tuesdays app so you can respawn this season in all new gear. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they say that victory, uh, victory often allows you to write history. Well, this is not the history that Philly would have wanted, obviously failing to win in season one, but now they have a chance to wipe the slate clean and they've done so well. Two maps already to zero in this series and the Hollywood one came down to the wire. Yeah, it looks like Philly, you know, they have a really strong teamwork coming back with, you know, a lot of their players that they had, you know, during the finals. I think obviously some more time in the off season with Sato, you know, being able to get him in. You know, they've been workshopping this, uh, this yeah, they, they, support they, setup. Yeah, they, they've been grinding pretty hard. I mean, a lot of the teams, you know, they got here, you know, uh, right after the holidays in like January, they started scrimming all the way up until now. Speaking of Philly, big shout out to the uh, crew over in Philadelphia, the watch party over at Xfinity Live. Love me a bit of the Fusion hey. fam. Very, very good to me when I went and visited them uh, and hung out for a while. So if you guys are enjoying the show so far, they're going to be pretty happy with how things are transpiring, but there is still another half of series. The Philly fans are cool when you're from Philly. And then I know you're, you're New Yorker like me, they're, they're not, the, they're not the, <laughs> the nicest, most welcoming, but no, it's cool. Yes, I tried to bring party Matt along, and I, I heard from the event organizer, like, oh, we can't have him. Yeah, they're, they're not. New York sports fans aren't allowed to be. <laughs> you know, the Philly, Boston, it's kind of that whole up, up these, East Coast area. These animosities in Seesaw all, the, all yeah. over the world are now. A new rivalry probably is born between London and Philadelphia after what happened at the end of the inaugural season and now yeah, right. there's a way to kick it off here. But it could already be over essentially, uh, you know, after this next map, London might not have a chance to win this series. Remember, it'd be 3-0 with four maps to play. Every map, like we told you last year, every map matters. Every so map I know matters. It comes down to that map. Can I get that on a wristband? <laughs> Maybe we should turn it into a song of some sort. But you're exactly right, especially when yeah. it comes towards getting into playoffs, stage playoffs and the like, we play out four maps even if it's a 3-0 result sort of before that fourth uh starts because well, we need to find a way to break ties in the such and, and the players want extra time out on stage here some deliberations from the philly fan club there at the front of stage is they're getting ready to cheer their team on and obviously it's horrible to lose the match right with less matches this year it's even more impactful to lose them 4-0 is really tough. You don't want I to do mean, that. You I mean, can. We're down from 40 matches to 28, so we've, you know we got it's real jam-packed, and the emphasis on each victory map, as you said, 
is very uh, yeah, is much higher. Let's put it that way. Not a no ton of time in this season to be average for a bit. Uh, you know, you're average. <laughs> you're, you're average <laughs> for a few you can't weeks. You come uh, out here Dallas fueling that stuff, and uh, you know, yeah. you expect to get some big results. Uh, you're average for a few weeks. Uh, you know, you'll, well, you'll have a long off season as uh, do see. A little bit of a, a pause here, so we'll find out what's going on and uh, jump right back into the game. Yeah, so obviously Voscaro is an assault map, a little bit different yeah. to the ones we've seen prior in, the, in this series, or you can kind of think of it like the first point of Hollywood, right, where we're trying to capture a point. So yeah. we actually see some different team compositions because of the, the way the map is. The map type often influences the map sort of topography, so a map like Voskaya actually gives us a lot of that verticality that you yes. were talking about earlier on in the series. A lot of high ground for the offense to take on. Defense, let's say if you're running three tanks, three supports, you can't really force those engagements, right? Like trying to like speed boost all the way around, like the bridges to the high ground, like you're not able to really kind of get in players' faces. and. You know, really, you know, try and get some picks early, start to steamroll, snowball a lot of these fights. So I think maybe here on Volskaya, we see our first, uh, you know, real variation in terms of comps. I think, uh, you know, Wrecking Ball is a hero, I think, who's quite strong. You know, I've uh, been seeing Mooma play him on stream, like, all off season, like, just grinding out there. And like, I think he, he is probably, like, one of those heroes. Like, remember when Ana came out and everyone wasn't sure and she was really good? Well, everyone said that she actually work her. felt a little bit weaker as opposed yeah. to the rest of the support heroes where she was released. Or I think Wrecking Ball is in the same type of spot where, like, I don't think people got a lot of opportunity to play around with him, like, you know, really mess with his kit, see how it worked with a lot of other compositions. I think he's actually quite strong. I think he could make an impact on stage one. Well, it, it takes our, like, generally understood concept of what a tank is. And then it gives it wheels and a supercharger and like <laughs> yeah. a hypersonic engine. It's like and shields. Then, yeah, so normally we, th we thought of tanks as, you know, these heroes without a lot of mobility, but very good at controlling space. And, and then Wrecking Ball kind of, you know, breaks that particular mold and has a lot of mobility. Profit's hovering it currently. Um, and it might be something they want to go with here. On Assault, we get different compositions. We won't necessarily have triple tank, triple support setups. Uh, you know, heroes that are good at controlling high ground. Hit scan heroes as well. I'm, not, I'm like Ash are an option here. But for Philadelphia to defend here, they will go with a very bulk standard composition. Again, it's going to be that triple tank, triple support here. They've been working on it a lot. It's clear to see. It's got them two map wins so far, man. You know, right now you do see that uh, London is on offense. So uh, we get that all fixed up. They're going to be coming right. out. Okay, so this is, our, spice. this is our first variation of something different. So now you're going to see the London Spitfire come out with four DPS. So you'll have Yuri playing Sombra, Prophet will be playing Farah, Nuss is the solo support on Mercy, and then Bidoshin, who we saw in the Grand Finals last year, played so many different heroes. Hot dang, Prophet's on the Farah. This is about to get good. So this is that quad DPS composition with the Hammond uh, or the Wrecking Ball as the tank here. This is gonna be interesting to see. We've seen a uh, few teams have actually played this. We know that this has been something he's done in screams. Masado's down already. There is so much damage available for London here just to dish out and really know it. They're trying to take shape. And this is why you need the Winston sometimes on defense because you're scared of this happening. So when, when they come out with this quad DPS, you need Winston on defense to make an impact. And Everybody's happy to see Widowmaker back. His last season, so many sick Widowmaker highlights, and uh, Birdring was one of the players making a lot of those. Can you feel the collective catharsis from Twitch chat right now? <laughs> Seeing a triple tank, triple support comp get put in the dumpster. But now the Spitfire have a couple ultimates after winning that particular fight, so they do have that um, the recon visor. So now they can obviously see what Philly are not only playing, but where they're set up. And that's going to be important to influence how they approach this next fight. Sombra and Tracer is a Philly setup here. And it makes it really difficult with the Infrasight available for EQO to do anything on Sombra. Going to get no value out of that stealth, which is obviously, you know, Sombra's primary tool. Your toolkit to make a play. As, uh, you see a nice shot there from Profit connecting with Carpe. Gets him low. Is London on the point? Philly's got to come out and challenge. They get there in the final second. Philly have no idea what to do against this. It's almost as if they have no response. They're trickling in players now for the time being. It's so easy that Nas even able to get a resurrect on Prop and put him back up in the sky, which in turn gives Nas that much more security to be able to hover over the ground. And there it is, the minefield from the Wrecking Ball. Just to making it very hard, but Boombox cleverly is trying to clear that minefield while he's in transcendent, so one of his unsuspecting teammates don't fall afoul of them. And a couple of kills have come from the side of Philly now, but those should going down. Carpe getting rid of Fury here in Bourbon. He's realizing that oh, he's run out of teammates, Matt. Uh, you know, that, that actually got really scary there for <laughs> Philadelphia as you know, the EMP plus the minefield there from Wrecking Ball. Devastating combo. So now that London has forced all these changes, I actually think they'll go, yeah. So they're going to go triple tank, triple support. So 
What you want to do is when they run that quad DPS, they want to force a lot of changes from the team who's playing, you know, goats or three tanks, three supports, and then kind of reset ultimate economy across the border. So they're able to accomplish for the most part. To the high ground now for London. This time a much more ponderous team composition, a little bit slower. Probably set up here and again, they're looking for an opportunity. They say, where can we go here to find that first pick? Poker near, trying to make an easy way into the back line by playing the high ground, quickly dodging away from Jester, attempting to get the pin. Probably wasn't, the twinkle toes. probably wasn't his ideal time to try and go fly up and he got hit with one of the ramps that's coming by. He's not able to move, but it's uh, they will make a play there. So Pogo does have that self shot to be able to use here. So we'll see. They don't have the Graviton Surge yet to combo with it. But I think they have to have an idea because London made so many changes. But they don't really have anything. On so paper, this is not a good fight for London. Yeah. Based on the ultimates they have available. Transcendence will be great here from Bedosian if he can get that extra 20 odd percent before the fight. And they might be waiting for just that. Yeah, I mean, if you're Philly, you know, or you at least should know, you have a huge ultimate advantage in this fight. They'll use the Transcendence to try and engage. They lose Sato, and they actually probably try and use it to keep him alive, try and make it all the way across the map to keep that Reinhardt up. Somehow Sato dies during the Transcendence, which is unbelievable in and of itself. So now London go into the second part of the fight with a man advantage at the Transcendence, and an Earth Shadow. Carpe goes down, the self strap behind them, though. London are able to respond quickly enough to prevent themselves from being vaporized. And again, they're back in that driver's seat. Sato pinned up against the wall, and Poco will try and hang around, but it's just stall at this stage. Even the self strap committed just to make sure this is quite this is quite crazy really to me to see London walk in without the transcendence. Philly gets to pop their trans first. They still lose a Reinhardt. It's incredible. We'll discuss that a little bit more though when we're back after the break for the second half of this map. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan. Every rival. Every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best. told me, uh, I don't know, let's say four months ago that playing four DPSs and uh, an unreleased hero as of then uh, would be good against three tanks and three supports, I would not have believed you. You, know, you wouldn't I, have said that, but I still wouldn't have believed you if you had said that. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be super happy if everybody uh, came in, selected DPS, and you just kind of played some <laughs> what, you mean like, of team you mean like, like ranked in diamond? Yeah, I guess. Don't tell me you don't know. I know you spent a lot of time there with me. Oh, we've yeah, seen, yeah. we've been through the, the shade, shade, the shade, shade, of death, shade from the, 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 the gold player, Mitch, Mitch, I am Diamond. You know uh, that very well. Uh, there's not really any proof of that, but oh, okay. Yeah, just check my profile, bro. Uh, I know that. Uh, uh, hashtag 1412. Yeah, towards the end there, where uh, we did see Boombox use that transcendence. We were like, oh, maybe he's using it to engage. Actually, Casado's like so far down on the staircase over there that they're trying to use it, it to keep him alive. Yeah, like coming across the whole point, not able to do so. so 
Uh, the Philadelphia Fusion will come out here. Nothing crazy. They're going to run their three tanks, three supports. They're going to keep Sato on Winston. So I think actually in, the, in this first match, the most surprising thing to me is how much Winston we've seen. And I think you probably play the Winston a ton because you... Because if they have Winston on the other side, that prevents you from running a lot of those DPS comps, right? So it's just like a fail save here. And you can still play that three tank, three support that you really want to. Winston's so great at just finding that one target to stick to and force them to pop their cooldowns to even get away. We actually saw a trade of Winston's in this fight. Sato, I thought he was going to get out alive there. But Bidoshin pursued and chased him down to at least make it to 5v5 and equal things up. Fury just trying to make sure that no one from Philly can set up on that higher ground. You can see he's constantly switching between low and high with the boosters. And there goes Sato. He's trying to get into the back. Nice! There it is. He gets run over there by Boombox. EQO had even reserved the shield bash for him. But they have to trade out Sato again to do it. Fury's going to get demeked here. And Philly have a great position on the point right now, despite not having that Winston. Yeah, Nino Gesture's trying to get healed up. He's actually out of line of sight from his Zenyatta. So he's got to come around the corner and get the heals up. And That'll be a big Graviton Surge that goes down. No kills come out of it, though. Poco here with his self-destruct. You're not going to need to use this if you're Philly. And Philly's going to actually have a really nice combo here. Mitch, go into the next fight. They're going to have the grab. They're going to have self-destruct. you got that sound barrier to keep you up through a lot of it. Rally, too. They may be able to snowball this pretty quickly. You know, I thought Poco would have would have uh, you know been sat there with that Michael Scott cringe on his face when he saw that Graviton come in and he wasn't able to eat it, even though he's looking at it. But he wasn't given any time by Birdry. And still... It wasn't enough for London to win the fight, so they lose that ultimate. They don't have the availability for Graviton uh, for a little while. Now it's going to have to be the self-destruct to try and get something happening, but that doesn't do too much either. It's kind of like a sign that says, beware of the dog, and then it's a chihuahua behind the door. Well you, well, you don't have your grab to use with it, so you're just trying to buy yourself some time. And now Gesture will be able to use Primal Rage. So this is just buying London even more time, right? They've used Sound Barrier and Rally here for Philadelphia. So London doing a nice job forcing some of these ults out. Man, why is Sato getting picked off so early in these fights? Probably the third where he's been the first player down for Philly. I mean, when you play, the, the downside of playing Winston with this composition is that obviously Winston a lot more squishier than Reinhardt. So you have to play in a really good positioning with your Winston. You know, if your Zarya can't hit you with a bubble, if your Diva's not there to fly in with Defense Matrix, because if your Winston gets out of position that the Diva dives in, you're going to lose both of those players instead of just the one. Well, this time it's Jester that goes down, the ostensibly more durable counterpart to the Winston in that tank roll. Carpe, that is an interesting Graviton turn. <laughs> and Nastas is going to sit there and laugh all the way to the bank. No, Sato manages to flatten him there, but a lot was expended to get rid of Lucio that had already used his sound barrier. But I digress, the Transcendence is in play now. Fury's trying to work from the high ground. Jester comes in out from nowhere. The runaway, pin against the wall. And Sato now needs that bowl from Carpe, but he's going to be stunned immediately. Gesture may have been able to turn that fight around with that one quick kill, because now Birdring and co are bringing in the heavy artillery. Yeah, and I mean, now with the Graviton Surges here for London, you will have the Reinhardt to just swing the hammer inside them, right? So Reinhardt also provides some extra damage. Wonder if Sato decides, yep, he's gonna go switch over to Ryan. So we're gonna have a mirror matchup here, I think. Once you see the Reinhardt come out from one side, uh, you're Winston diving into Reinhardt, uh, you know, in the Brigitte, you're not going to live very this long. This feels here. bad. Yeah, it's, it's it, I mean, a lot of stun, a lot of very quick damage. There's always a pin available, well, shield bash uh, is gonna happen. Uh, I mean, a stun, uh, a Discord or a few swings from the Ryan and a headshot from the Zen, and now Winston's gone. Self-destruct here for Fury. That's the only really relevant ultimate that's on the board. I guess EQO now finds his rally. Fusion will use that when it's really time to start fighting here. Is it that the rally armor doesn't persist for very long anymore? Decays after a short time. Again, it's just jockeying for position for the most part for now. Now you know they want to fight. EQO uses his rally and they're going to be pushing forward now. Self-destruct coming in here for the London Spitfire though. Looking for something. Fishing. But coming up with very little. Gesture low, his shield gets blown in. And Carpe chases him down now with a charge particle beam. Boombox, great timing to come in with the transcendence here. Both teams have used it, but Philly have all the players still up. That Juno also commits the sound barrier. You know Philly is serious about this fight. They're going to invest everything they've got and try and get the win here. That's forced away. He's down. Carpe, 93 charge. Philly get it done here on that second push. Yeah, I tell you who makes the play there. It's EQO. So. You have Boombox in that side room where the Mega Health Pack is, and he's trying to get a, a little bit to the side of Gesture to be able to land that Discord or behind the shield that they can push on through. And Prophet actually spots it out. When Prophet starts the end of the rally and he has, you know, some of that speed boost, he tries to go around on a flank. 
and he gets Boombox low, and then EQO comes in. Big burst heal, stun. They're able to take down Prophet and then run around the outside, and that's how you see they still have that transcendence, right? If EQO is not there to protect Boombox, they don't have the transcendence there towards the end to keep everybody topped up. You don't know what would happen there. Big play there from EQO. I'll be honest, man. I actually wasn't even expecting to see Neptuno today. I, yeah. We caught up with him like last week, and his hand was covered in bandages. The guy said, "Look, I've got you know, I'm having some some wrist soreness problems. Bandages, stuff like that. bandages, extreme, like tape. Like, it was like, tape, it looked right? like scotch tape. Okay, yeah. that's fair enough. Yeah. So, but you know, he said to me like, yeah, I saw a bit sore right now, and I thought, well, they 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 brought up Elk from you know the two way contract, so you know, it still seems like they want to go with Neptuno you know, here and keep the veteran head on the team. So you know, Elk's waiting in the wings, but like, uh, like, no, I refuse to go. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, he's taking after uh, another player from Philly, like uh, Joel Embiid. He's like, they got back spasms since the interview. Like, oh, are we able to play? He's like, oh, I'm a warrior. It's like, Neptuno, <laughs> he's a warrior. He's, he's a battling warrior. through it. <laughs> so, no, nah, man, the hand injuries for these players, man, no joke, right? Bird Ring missed some games last yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, and look, that coincided with a real dip in his performance, and it didn't return until those finals. So look after yourself, gamers. It's a jungle out there. Not really. I mean, we live in LA. It's more it's concrete jungle. Same thing, really. Just watch your wrist. Poke and push that high ground again. Just to see if you can sweep anyone off from the sort of the displacement of that charge. Didn't really come up with anything this time, but if they can get a pick onto Nas, or if they can find Bedosian in the back, they'll be happy. That's not what Poker would have liked, though. He actually gets knocked onto the wrong side, taken out of his mech. Sato is not going to survive because yeah. there's no defense mech to keep him up. Uh, I, I mean, when you lose one of those two heroes, when you lose the D.Va, look for the Winston to go right after. Yep. When you lose the Winston, you know, the D.Va probably should be there using the Matrix. You know, if they don't have their you know, shift ability to kind of get out of dodge, you know, fly away. Probably going to lose them as well. And that's where the push completely falls apart for Philly. And this is why Zenyatta is such an important hero with these particular setups. So both teams are very durable in general. The Discord Orb really, really allows you to snowball fights in your favor if you're getting damage on that Discord target. Without the tanks there, it's much easier to do just that. Jess Chanel caught to face a micro rocket, so he needs to eject for the time being, but he's already been healed up, so he sets up. Gonna wait around the corner. He'll have his jump available once again if he needs to make a, an adjustment of positioning, and he'll go again. And, and you wanna get Zen, right? But the issue is, is your Winston jumps on Zen. You, know, you have Brigitte there with a stun and knock back. You get discarded. There's nothing you can even do to combat that as Sato dives in. They're gonna have to use the trance to keep him up. Will that be enough, Prophet? Not really sure what he's looking for there with the whip shot. Maybe hoping to knock someone off the edge, but he's a little bit too far away. Great timing on the shield there from Carpe to keep Sato alive. He's been really getting punished for a lot of this particular map. Sato was even discord at the time. Real safe maneuver there on that Winston for Philly. And again, Sato's trying to tussle with Prophet. Look in the back line. Boombox is a little bit lower than he otherwise like to be. This Graviton Surge again just catches Jester. He just goes for the Primal Rage. So now it's going to be another exchange. Self-destruct over the top. Poker not affected by that one. He ejects his mech. He doesn't use self-destruct aggressively just to refresh and get back to the fight. But he QOs down. Yeah, and you actually did have Pogo eat Bird Ring's Graviton Surge there as well. So you got nothing out of the grab for London. But these Zarya's, you get so charged up. There's so much healing. The fights go for so long. He's going to build up right back towards it already at 60%. Boombox so frustrated. Fri frustrated. He tried to save Neptuno with that Transcendence, but it was just a half second too late. And then they're forced to commit to a fight with the Transcendence, which means they have to try and get some value out of that Transcendence. But they don't have the Lucio there to back it up. And it's very hard to win from a player disadvantage. Rally for EQO, another grab coming up for Bird Ring, Matt. So, you know, uh, easy come, easy go, I suppose. At, at this point, Philadelphia is committed to obviously running three tanks, three supports. I wonder why they didn't opt for something different. Bird Ring with the grab connects with three players. You're going to have EQO and Boombox go down. So, Philly's just going to have to die. They're going to have to back out here, try and live another day. But, you know, why you, Philly, right? You know, Sato, obviously, you know, he plays Winston. You think, obviously, he's able to play Wrecking Ball, another mobile tank. You know, with the explosive DPS players you have, with Carpe and EQO, why not try and do something a little bit more DPS heavy here? Sato and, and Jesher are both suffering. They both have the highest amount of deaths on their respective teams. For Sato, it is about double. Uh, you know, sort of his next closest well, teammate. Uh, I mean, Jesher is dying less than Sato and putting down a, a lot more damage. You know, 7,200 to 5,800. So getting a lot more value out of that win. See, Carpe quickly turns his back. Just, oh, where's my Zenyatta? I need to keep him alive. He expends the barrier to do so. Sato gets aggressive. Oh, it's eaten. Carpe just serves that one up. And oh, I guess Fury's going to get his gains after all. Now back towards the point we are in overtime. They needed that crash so badly, Philly, and now they're going to have to go without it. 
His ocean very low. They caught him up on that transcendent. That's the first pick, the first step. Gesture body blocked against the door. Down to half before he can get away. London now going to find their time and try and return to the fight. This could be scary though. Self destruct. Sato and Carpe have to protect each other. Very clever. Carpe shields Sato and gets behind him, so he blocks line of sight. Neither were affected by the self destruct. Classy play. A bit of finesse from Philly as they finally get this point eight. And the biggest thing is that when all the ultimates are used from London, Philly obviously answering back with their own ultimates. They just save that transcendence towards the end. You just have that healing with the Zenyatta ultimate. You're able to push on through. That's when they're able to find some kills. Push on through the point. Now only 15 seconds or so here to take point B. You get it great. If you don't, you don't feel that bad. Yeah, this is more than you expected already. Probably if you're Philly. Carpe is close to a grab though. He's getting a lot of damage. The Dojin's down early. This might be a little bit of salvation now for Philly, who looked to be languishing somewhat. Gesture also falling. Nuts on the high ground trying to get away, but he's discorded a great placement by Boombox to put pressure on that Lucio. Now overtime. Oh, we're well and truly in there, but Philadelphia are looking very happy with this foray into enemy territory. Two ticks, and there'll likely be another here as the self destruct will seal the deal. And that will be four points from Philly to two from London, which means that Spitfire now need to turn around and do the same thing to stay in this. And when Bedoshin dies, now obviously it's a huge death there for Zenyatta to fall, no Discord, but he's so close to Transcendence as well. As we can take a look, this grab that comes out towards the end here from Carpe. You know, the rally is coming through from Profit. Perfect placement there. Look, he knew, unless Fury has about five million sensitivity, that he wasn't gonna turn around and eat that one up. The, the Diva was already moving. Already, you know, considering other opportunities, and that was the time to go for it. He charged that up very quickly because he maintained high charge on his weapon from the prior fight. And now I guess we get to see what London decides to do on offense. So they come out with that quad DPS again. It's quite effective. What does Philly do on defense? Do they opt to just go with, a, I guess, your your standard you know, goats, your three tanks, three supports, but swap out the Reinhardt for Winston for a little bit more, you know, dive target mobility and whatnot. So, so Matt, for those at home who are wondering, yep. what happens if London Spitfire finish and they get four checkpoints and they still have time in the bank? Uh, so so they'll, they'll go again. Uh, you, they'll have an opportunity to take point A and we'll, we'll see if they're able to do that within uh, the allotted time. Whereas Philadelphia won't have the chance yes. to do that. They've run out of time in their bank. So they now will be defending for the rest of this map. Uh, Poco be on top of the building, just trying to scout. He actually, so Fury's actually coming out of the spawn uh, in stealth, and uh, Poco just pre-fires the door, and he's able to knock him out of it. So now, that obviously, they know they're running Sombra, so... More like that. I like this. Oh, Fury, the ranging long far and wide here. Again, he's probably going to try and embed himself and take his time. It's an interesting spot to put the translocator. That That's where he'll be returning to when he sort of pulls the plug on any attacks he's making. On to the point now, I London. Big shot from Birdie, the headshot was there. And there's the follow-up, Neptuno and Carpe are down. Profit, great pick from up above. Birdring though. Yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> what do you do? Boombox is down. Sato obviously able to punish Birdring for that particular play, but Poco now has to deal with the Sombra on point. Good positioning, at least the setup for the Philly tanks here. They'll be able to contest this for a little longer, but not nearly as long as they would have liked. EQO is in big trouble having done that. He was out of position already. He knew he was probably going to go down, so we tried to commit the shield bash to get something for that. And, and you look at this cut that London's running, and if you're Philadelphia Fusion, you're like, why aren't they just diving the Mercy? Like, this makes zero sense. Like, you should be able to just dive the Mercy, take her out. It's because she has such great mobility. And the heroes you combo her with, right? Profit can just keep floating in the sky. It's an easy escape if somebody jumps on her. You can fly to the Widowmaker all the way across. You start healing up Gesture as well, and he starts rolling around and launching himself in the sky. You end up building that Valkyrie rather quickly. Nas uses it there to top everybody off. And now they'll move into point B. You know what's so funny about this setup is that this comp is actually reminiscent of what we saw in the grand final in the bar place, right? Multi like more than two DPS, solo, you know, healing mercy. Yeah. This is what we actually saw London beat Philly in the grand finals last year with. Even though there have been multiple changes to the metagame and, you know, the, the generally accepted way to play Overwatch at the top level, we still kind of come full circle in a way. Let's see if it works out. They've got another fight to win yet and two minutes and 25 seconds to do so. EMP, Matt. It's going to be so important from Fury. He knows that if he uses that boombox, we'll have no shield, and quickly no life. An easy pick. And that's what Lana were looking for. Gutting the Philadelphia Fusion in a matter of just seconds. Great setup, and now they're looking to pretty much take this one away in one fight. Very clean, very calmly executed as well. A mine field will be left on at the point to make it much harder for Philly to contest. And Philly have switched to Genji Tracy here, but Neptuno's down once more.
It's gonna be tough. Regal already being forced out here, and that'll be it. Oh, that's a bad sign for Philly. And London is able to do this, Mitch, because you have such a versatile lineup. You know, Fury and Optane can go and play Sombra, very strong Sombra. But Doshin, we've seen him pick up DPS heroes in the past. You know, we've seen him play a decent amount of Roadhog as well. And then you have Prophet in Bird Ring. And if you're Philly, you're like, well, if we die Bird Ring in the back playing Widow, he just probably grapples, goes away. We have to dedicate probably two players to go do that. Maybe Carpe plays a Tracer. You have EQO play a Genji. Everybody else is just going to get dove. You're going to have the EMP there. It's going to take out the supports. You, you really don't have an easy target to take out here. Yeah, this is obviously by and largely accepted the second best in the in the entire Overwatch League. Like the Tracer, season. yeah. Just like wrecking people on Tracer, which is actually something that Philly did. You know, Philly were also able to do last year. They had Hotbar yeah. playing that Tracer. That may not be an option to them anymore. It, it's funny. You hide the name there of Bedoshin at the bottom, you're like, oh, who are you watching? You're probably like, oh, yeah, that's, this is Prophet, right? <laughs> like, you know? The safety like, will be out there, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, you, when you have, I, I think that'll be actually a really, uh, you know, big thing as the season goes on. Flex DPS? Is having, well, just having off tanks and flex supports and main supports who can play other roles, because you never know when some kind of variation of a comp with four DPS <laughs> comes through, right? Now, if this map is drawn, if Philly are able to hold London at bay and draw this map, the series will go to Philly. There won't be enough opportunities for London to actually get enough maps to win. So Philly can win here right now, still. London have a long road to get back into the fighting here, into this series. And you can see the setup here. Philly finally going for something a little bit spicy. We like that. Widow, Tracer, Sombra, Wrecking Ball to drop in. Oh, I like, I like this from London. So they go back and they make some changes. So you bring in McCree here. So McCree, obviously, catch one of these flankers out of position. Great against Sovereign Trace. You can yeah. hit him with a flashbang, stop him in their tracks. The, the only thing you don't like is that McCree versus Widowmaker matchup, right? Uh, you know, Widowmaker can just outrange McCree in these situations. So that's where you really need to see Gesture and Fury put that pressure up on Carpe. Prophet, though, he's looking, and he wants Carpe. He's on the hunt, yeah. He knows approximately where Carpe is from the last shot fired. He's actually been chased down. So, you know, clever from EQO to try and hold him at bay there, keep him on his toes. Prophet got hacked there as well. Carpe picks him off, but it was a fantastic job from Poco to actually, uh, you know, reduce his faculties. And now we get a classic Carpe moment already. First match in the season, and he's starting to flex a little bit more. Fury won't do much when he's hacked. He's going to be forced to jump off the edge here, yeah. Not going to have a lot of time to reset, so. Philly know. Philly know they can win this series here. This is yeah. huge. And, and if, he, okay, so this is what I wanted to see. So Bird Ring will go over and play Widowmaker. In this type of situation, when they're, they, they have no mercy on the other side, they're playing Lucio and Zen. You get a first pick, that player is going to go into the respawn. No chance of coming back. It gives you a huge advantage. When you have no ultimates on the board, Widowmaker, one of the strongest heroes, getting one of those early first bloods. This is it, Matt. Last chance for London Spitfire, and they have to make a clean opening. They have Birdring on the Widowmaker as well, so it's going to be an epic grudge match between these two Widow players. They got to touch. One second remaining, London do touch. Gesture gets himself the Nana Boost and forces Neptuno out of position initially in this fight. Now he'll try and set up. There are enemies on all sides, though. He realizes the Philadelphia future is spread. Huge, though! What a name for Bedoshin! Three players unable to heal up as the fight begins with Boombox and Poco. As a result, are down. Sato can't quite get away. A self-destruct on the point here. A victory party for London! And they quickly snatch the series back. Just as it looked like they may have lost it here. And now, two to one. As London get their first in this series. And not a moment too soon. <laughs> uh, and you wonder if they found what works. We'll go into what could be the final map after this quick commercial break. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
That's a classic London Spitfire maneuver there, being just, I mean, the inches from losing the entire series, of course, off the basis of a draw in that last map, and then it going all the way. Um, we know these two teams. We've seen many map fives from both Philadelphia and London, uh, uh, respectively, and that is definitely on the table here. You know how they say it's always sunny in Philadelphia? Yeah. I just say it's always map five it's not, in Philadelphia. Yeah. I saw a great shirt that says that. Always map five <laughs> in Philadelphia. Love to see it. It may well be at this case, and there's something we knew both these teams quite a lot for last season. For Sky, a very close affair, Matt. Any last thoughts on that one before we head to Rialto? Uh, and look, London, I think when they came out and they ran that quad DPS, I don't think really Philly knew how to defend it. I think if you're London, you look as that's potentially a strength. Like, do you feel better about you no know, Bedotion being your flex support playing a DPS than maybe like Boombox playing it? I think you probably do. And then you have Fury playing Sombra. Yeah, if they try, if they that. try and if they try and match it, you know, uh, four DPS for four DPS, that's a game I think London would take any day of the week. This was something that Philadelphia had the option to do last season when yeah. Hotba was on the team. That extra bit of flexibility allowed them to bring that tracer into the fold, and he had great success playing that role. So perhaps. It's just not something that Philadelphia is confident leaning on, but it's nice to see London find a way to unravel this very uh, lumbering three tank, three support comp. And I guess that's the benefit of having a larger roster, right? Because you can be equipped for situations like this and metas that can arise out of nowhere. You're going to need to be this year. Oh, without a doubt. Because I, I think with this year, I think people are going to get even more creative than they did last year. Try so many different things. But Ocean comes out on Widow just trying to get a, a grapple shot, maybe pick up one. So. I know three tanks, three sports for both teams. Sado playing Winston, as I uh, have Jester playing Reinhardt. So, just tricking you guys a little bit. We're waiting a little bit longer. See what happens. So, obviously, this map we haven't talked about okay. too much, obviously, uh, Rialto. It, it is essentially uh, an escort map. So, we are expecting to see a little bit more of that, that tank and support composition set up. I think someone just, the head just exploded, like, oh, we're playing three tank, three support again. And that's what our IT issue was here. So, we see. <laughs> Mind that very much. But we do expect to see teams that play fairly close together because these are fairly, well, while not being linear, there aren't a lot of opportunities to really break outside of, you know, playing through a series of choke points. And, and Rialto's choke points are really unforgiving. Like, uh, it's very difficult at times to even take point A. It's uh, going to come around this bridge. You know, you can get stalled at this corner for you a very long time. The water by the defending team as yeah. well, quite easily. Uh, I think Agility's got a 5k on Lucio <laughs> on this map, and all, yeah. all, all stars. That was that was a sight of pole. So Philly are defending here. You can see Sato's trying to wrap around behind them a little bit here and just give them a reason to constantly look over their shoulder. Boombox, great opening. He's done that a few times today, getting that first pick on the on his opposite number in Zenyatta, and that's going to gut London Spitfire's healing capacity in this fight. Also, Matt, prevent them from generating a transcendence, which they really want in this mirror match of compositions. And look, I mean, Rialto is a map, like I just mentioned. You can get stuck at these corners on point A for a very long time. Like, when you make this roundabout, and then you have to go into, like, the courtyard and then go back under, like, the overpass by the bridge to even take point A, we see tons of teams just lose fights there, right? Now, this is uh, one map that is really strong for the defense. You have a lot of high ground at the beginning. And I think this is one where you can actually use the Winston a little bit more effectively. A lot of escape routes. Look, if Philly's arrows darken the sky, London will fight in the shade. That's what they're trying to do right now and make sure they're not taking too much damage. Also not charging up the enemy's eye yet too much. Birdring pushing forward. Sade dropped down. He immediately got given a bubble, but EQO is quite low. Transcenders, great timing on that one too. But the Spitfire get themselves the sound barrier now. Gesture's missing though. So despite the fact that they're far more durable right now, they don't have... The, the hitting power, I guess, to finish this fight off. And London Spitfire, uh, I'll be honest, they're, they're getting spawn camp. Uh, but but uh, it, it looks bad, right? But this is something that actually frequently happens on this map. That's right. Uh, yeah, it is. It looks really tough for London, like just getting around the corner. You're like, oh, they're getting spawn camp. Like, this is horrible for London. Like, this is something that actually kind of happens here. They try and go around the back alley. They'll like flip positions here as now Philadelphia's kind of moved from where the offensive side would attack from. Kafe has a Graviton Surge. Looking to make some use out of it here. Poco eats Burn Rings though. <laughs> okay, both <laughs> Graviton Surges get eaten up by the respective Divas. So, just, uh, okay, wipe that slate clean. Now it's down to fighting boots on the ground, so to speak. It was just falling to EQO. Sato cleans up nice for it was. It was super hard for the Spitfire to get any traction in this fight. They have a Transcendence. They just don't want to use it here. They're a long way from their spawn because they went around the back way, so it's going to be a while before reinforcements come. Uh, they end up using the Transcendence late here. It's actually answered by the sound barrier. Maybe they thought Fury was going to be able to catch, you know, a few players with that. This is like a costly mistake, Matt. And, and they get nothing, so 
So now you'll see no support ults for London here. I mean, maybe they decide to make some changes, but with a minute to go, you change here, you give a huge ultimate advantage to Philadelphia, and you're looking at a really good defensive stand from Philly. Jester has that Earth Shadow. We're close to another Graviton from Birdring and Carpe. So credit to them. They lose, the, they lose their grabs in the prior fight, but they do so much damage. There's so much healing. They stay alive so long, but they just get them straight back. And now we pretty much go for a repeat affair. Jester takes a fair bit of damage as he tries to push up the stairs, and there's the Graviton Surge. Everyone is tied together. Very nicely executed from Carpe. And yes, Birdring tried to go for one as well, but didn't quite have the same pizzazz. So, so, I mean, you did get them to use their Transcendence, uh, Philadelphia. They used the Graviton Surge. You'll come back here. You'll have probably a Sound Barrier. Maybe Bid Ocean builds up towards, you know, his Transcendence. Bird Ring goes Reaper. So we'll see if they can just speed boost this Reaper in right to the tanks and do a ton of damage. Reaper loves to get up close and personal. Does more damage the closer he is to his target. As you saw, Sato run straight at the screen there. But it's Bird Ring going down to Boombox. Another critical pick at Sato. Yes. Bon Voyage as Bidosi goes over the side. And this is not going to look good on the scorecard for the London Spitfire, Matt. They've, uh, they've advanced 43.5 meters. And now they've been ground into very nerdy dust here on the payload profit. Forced to just try and stay alive as long as he can. Fury does knock off. Nice little whip shot from EQO there. And it will be the round. That is going to hurt. Yo, Sato's primal rage there was sick. This no, they tried to. Lit. They, they, I, I, I held myself back from saying dumb lid. I'm, I'm waiting until later in the season to bring that one out. But no, nah, he, uh, he actually goes right over the top. So, like I mentioned, like they were trying to speed boost the Reaper in. Obviously, Winston is a great you know, target to take out. And he goes right over the top, uses the Primal Rage, knocks the supports back. This was pretty sick as well. Carpe trying to like keep track of where Fury is. <laughs> trying to make sure it doesn't get needed enough. Lands on the stairs. There's a, there's a lot happening on screen there as well. And for the players, it's, it's less a matter of them just trying to comprehend what's going on, but also to act on said comprehension. So Carpe, knowing to go for a grab in a position where it probably haven't seen it used too many times before, very effective. Birdring used his at the same time. London weren't able to get nearly as much done with it. This man on your screen, I mean, whatever hero he's on, there's always a sense that, you know, there's going to be carnage. I mean, Philadelphia in the first half, they only have three deaths. Look at school teacher EQO, he's just rattling down the orders. And the boys know exactly where but, they would need to be. I mean, they, they know how important of like a, uh, a revenge match this is. They know how important it is to start the season off well. well you do you, not want to leave this You're shaking the week. monkey off your back from, yeah. you know, people would have reminded you of, you know, what happened in the grand final. You would have been reminded of it every time someone talks about the, the, the champion of the Overwatch League. You know that that could have been is you. It, is it weird as well, like, you know, Philly obviously was in the finals last year. They had a really strong year uh, start to finish. Right. It's like, I feel like we haven't even talked about them a ton coming into the season. We talked about New York, you know, some of the new expansion teams going through, like the Vancouver Titans and London again. It's like, Philly's just kind of gotten lost in that. It's like, you forget how good these guys Because they are. didn't change the team. The yeah. And people seem to think that's, a, you know, an indicator of, well, no, everyone, okay, I'll be fair to, to you guys. Uh, Yiska and co, I know you guys, uh, you know, woke. But this is one fight here. If London lose it, th that's pretty much it. So they need to be winning every fight for the rest of, of this particular map. And, the payload is very, very close. You can see the checkpoint just around the corner. Shield Bash already comes out. Gesture takes a heck of a lot of damage early on. The rest of Philly are trying to find the monkey. Poco up to the high ground, dropping down again. You can see that London are being forced away. They're not ready to sort of group up and fight. They've been sort of displaced a little bit. London needs to be perfect here. Philly can be a little messy. They can brawl it out here. They can lose a few bodies. They'll have that spawn advantage to come back and take this. Bidoshin backs away. He was on the high ground, but Sato's way out of position on this. Reinhardt, it may not matter though. Jess has gone down. Profit now as well in a great position just to boop and bump Sato around the place, but it's that Gino to find a pick on Nuss, and there it is. Philadelphia Fusion. The new story. The East Coast team has chosen to write starts off with a bang and with a big fat W. And their defense there in Rialto was absolutely unreal. They hold them. London Spitfire not even able to make it around the corner. Some really nice plays from Sato. Playing a lot of Winston in this series. A bit of a surprise coming in. Expected a lot of Reinhardt to be seen. But Philadelphia gets a little bit of a revenge here on London. Uh, as I, you know, They probably would have loved to have the win in the finals and coming in here. but. They, uh, they write a little bit of the wrongs there towards the end of the season to this match. I mean, uh, many power rankings definitely put London above the Philadelphia Fusion coming into this first week. And it's vindicating for the players and also for the fans to know that the team that I love them so much is still going to be right up at the top of the heap. We said Carpe would be a player to watch out for. We said he'd be dangerous. I mean, 
no deaths in that last map. He was pretty much untouchable. Fantastic average energy, up about 50%. Way ahead of Birdring in that regard. Looking very sharp to finish the series off. Yeah, I mean, Carpe never really looks bad. One of the better players in the league, you know, in the running for MVP last year. I believe we have Danny on the floor with Carpe for a few words. What a match. Blizzard Arena, make some noise for Carpe and Philadelphia Fusion. Carpe, Grand Final Champions have been beaten by you and your teammates. You finally got your revenge. How do you feel? 자, 복수 전에 드디어 필라델피아 퓨전이 성공했습니다. 카르페 선수, 소감 말씀 부탁드릴게요. 인터뷰에서 4대0 내겠다고 했는데 못 내서 조금 아쉽고 그래도 기뻐요. So during an interview, I remember I said it was going to be an easy 4-0. Uh, I'm a little sad that that didn't come true. It was 3-1. But overall, I'm very happy that we got the win. All right. So second question. This Sunday, you guys will be facing against Atlanta Reign, one of the new expansion teams. After defeating the Grand Final champions, do you feel more confident going into that match? 자, 이번 주 일요일 날 이제 또 아틀란타 팀과의 경기가 있죠. 챔피언들을 꺾은 필라델피아 퓨전 팀 조금 더 이길 거라고 자신을 하시나요? 어, 더 쉬울 것 같아요. I feel like it's gonna be way easier. Alrighty, well that's all I have, everybody. Let's head back to the casters. Yes, I, I, maybe we should have introduced Carpe to you guys beforehand. I uh, love it. I love guys, it. Guys, Carpe, Carpe, guys. Yeah, he, he's very direct <laughs> uh, in the way that he speaks. So get used to that. Uh, a lot of confidence about him as well. Not a happy chap here than the end of last year, but that is, I mean, that's a great push. There's real impetus for them now after a series where they had to showcase a bit of depth already in the first match of this season. Uh, I think last year, like, they kind of were a little bit surprised, like, how good they ended up being. I think you can see the new attitude this year. They come in. They know how good they are. They know how good they can be. Like, I think they're a team that they look as, like, they're a little bit underrated by everybody out there, and they want to come in and they want to make a statement. A big one here against London, the first match. Match, high octane match. Let's take a little bit of a look back over some of the moments that defined uh, the second part of this match. We started with Volskaya here, and it looked very back and forth. We started to see that innovation and comp that we do on assault maps. Yeah, and I think London, they really ended up winning this map with their great four DPS comp. I think Philly really didn't know how to respond to it. I think Philly was kind of prepared for it, playing a lot of, you know, Winston in their three tank three supports, but they went to came down to dealing with the quad DPS, they were not able to do so. It looks so difficult to play, you know, the main tank, the Winston Lorraine at this level. Now you see, you know, both Jester and Sider were falling first in these fights. They were considered to be high priorities. That Graviton Eat was just beautiful. This fire grenade hitting three people. That's, That's what allowed London to stay in this series. That is filthy. And we don't see much Analetti, which is great to see. Then Rialto, though, definitely seemed like a much flatter Spitfire coming into this map. Like th this one was not that close. I mean, we talked about how hard it is on the uh, offense to really push here on Rialto on point A. And Philly made it look easy on B. Uh, London barely got the, I mean, essentially they got the payload over the bridge and barely a little bit around that first corner and that's it. Philly didn't need to do much on offense. You know? Both Fury and Poco got well, getting the work out there. But what, when the when the card is that close at the beginning, you don't even really need to be that good on the offensive end. You just need to play aggressive and force like a separation, get a final blow or two to go in your favor, and you're able to take it. Yeah, I mean, defensively, it's actually quite hard to play from there because you spawn so much further away than the attacking team, but Philly just didn't sustain any losses. We have a player of the match, of course, to discuss, and it may be no surprise to any of you uh, that we have, in fact, chosen to name Carpe as your Omen by HP player of the match. I mean, what superstar started strong. Let's hope he finishes that way this year. I mean, you know, the meta is a little bit different than last year, but I remember seeing this graphic a ton last year. You know, this graphic was up after about every Philadelphia Fusion match. I mean, he is just so good game in and game out. It's you know, we talked a little bit about it. Maybe the word was used a little bit inconsistent. It's like, I think there's a lot of teams that would take like Carpe at like 65% over some of their players, man. He is so strong. And I think uh, the one thing you saw is like maybe like some of his effect on the game is uh, a little bit neutralized by the fact he has to play Zarya in this type of meta, right? Can't play like a Tracer or a Widowmaker who can really just run through teams. But look at that. As Zarya in this match. 48,000 damage, that's unreal. And you expect him to have a lot of high energy kills as opposed to his eliminations because 
I mean, he's playing yeah. with uh, very close quarters compositions. They're playing three tanks, three supports. But Carpe did exactly what was asked of him. And DPS players this year need to make that impact. But that, of course, was a player of the match brought to you by Omer by HP. Those DPS players who will be flexing to Zaya for a lot of these matches will need to continue to perform at that level. And, and I mean, seeing that high energy kills and seeing the average energy up above like 50% in the amount of damage, I mean, you need to have good teamwork with your tanks to get a ton of that damage. Because already when you lay the bubbles down, you know, the damage comes through on the tanks, and then you're able to get the damage to deal out. You need to have good teamwork with Sato and Poco to be able to turn that into damage. And there you go, more games to come after the break, ladies and gentlemen. The New York Excelsior will take on the Boston Uprising. It's definitely not a one to be missed. We'll be back with that and more right after these messages. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered. Welcome back, everybody, to the Overwatch League. That's right, what an epic first match that was. But now, it's time for another epic match, actually. I'm Doe, with me is Monte Cristo, as always, entering into, what, our seventh year of casting together at this point? In too, too many, if you ask it's me. Been, too uh, many. Well, you know, I mean, until you can find someone. Actually, don't try to find someone better. Just don't. <laughs> Just don't even I think about I it. I couldn't possibly, though. I couldn't possibly. Wow, what a guy. It is Valentine's Day, isn't it? Well, I know. And there's another new addition. To our duo, I feel like your mustache is kind of its own thing in itself, isn't it? It's like it a trio be, now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How does, does that make mustache. you feel uncomfortable? My mustache third wheeling our cast? Not really. It feels like I should grow mine out more now or something like that, but then look a little bit weird at the stubble. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll plan on it. Guys, it's going to be Boston Uprising versus New York Excelsior. It's going to be great. It's a stage three finals rematch, actually. And keep in mind, that was the stage that Boston actually went undefeated last year, but then lost to uh, New York 3-0 in the uh, finals. So 
Definitely a little bit of a rivalry there. Both of these teams, coincidentally, were knocked out in the playoffs last year by Philadelphia, who just uh, won our last match, too. So when they play them later in the season, might be a little bit of a grudge match going on there, too. But let's talk about Boston a little bit, because this is a team coming into this match with uh, kind of some roster woes a little bit in a way. Yeah, especially because we did see the Gamsu trade to the Shanghai Dragons and fusions yeah. brought up into the main roster. I think this is an exciting move. I wonder how it's going to impact Boston in the short term, because Gamsu uh, typically has been a large part of Boston's shot calling, but fusions was just so impressive, as we see here in the Overwatch World Cup playing for Team UK, excellent Reinhardt, ma massive shatter after massive shatter coming through from this young player. And if there's anything Boston has been good at so far in the Overwatch League, besides, of course, going 10-0 in Stage 3, which yeah. is impressive for any team, that helps. it's that they've been able to identify talent, young talent, I think, better than about any other team in this league. So I'm excited yeah. to see what they bring today. And I mean, while that talent hasn't always worked out for them in the past, it's still a thing where you look at this match today and you're like, all right, well, Boston going to do the best they can. Obviously, they're not going to be able to use Color Hex, one of their DPS and a player a lot of people are looking forward to today, but he's going to be available a little bit later. It's not going to take long, I think, for this team to kind of find its footing after these sort of uh, shuffles. But uh, yeah, but on the New York side of things, too, I mean, this is a team that you go back to like, let's go back a year ago. Everybody's looking at New York and they're saying this is the team that's going to win the Overwatch League. Nobody seemed to be able to touch them. They seemed meta-proof. And then kind of in stage four, things uh, things changed a little bit, huh? That level yeah, of they play did. And into the playoffs. Especially the playoffs. And part of that, the at least according playing, to the yeah. team, when we talked playoffs, to them, was them and saying... And part of that, at least according to the team, when we talked to them, was them saying that they needed...